Hello, and welcome to Kirby Squeak Squad, sparing Waddle Dee. So today we're going to play through the entire game without killing any Waddle Dees, sparing as many as I can, and we have some story already. Snack time, and what will we have? A piece of strawberry shortcake. I'm sure that butterfly is evil in no way, shape, or form. Uh-oh. Oh no, Kirby's cake. And yes, this is a game where Kirby goes on a grand adventure for a piece of cake. And he's off. So I'm going to start by saying this game, I have pre-recorded this, I'm just doing a voiceover after because I'm not that great at platformers. And we have a wall we have to skip over already. I'm not that great at platformers as you'll see eventually through the playthrough, so that's why I'm doing the voiceover now. And luckily this level is pretty easy, we can get through it. Now the reason I decided to do a spare Waddle Dee challenge is because one, I really like Waddle Dee. Aside from Kirby, um, Waddle Dee is my favorite Kirby character, obviously. Also really like Waddle Dee too. Um, I was thinking of sparing him, but decided not to, and we'll just get this level up right here, this one up. And we come across a hothead. And now we'll have a Waddle Dee here who will suicide. Yeah, there are quite a few of those in the game. Nothing we can really do about them, but we will spare as many as we can. And that's the first level already done. Pretty easy stuff so far. And we get to see the Kirby dance. But it's a little barren in the background. Perhaps we'll be finding something else within the game. Okay, so this is a mechanic that happens in Squeak Squad. Kirby can essentially hold his abilities in bubbles, and by tapping on the bottom screen, which I decided to emit out from this video, we can see he has a sword ability. And there's a big Waddle Dee. He is also included in the challenge, so we will not be killing him. And yeah, they're gonna go over food here. We can also hold on to food, but we'll just keep in our inventory for the time being in case I do mess up, which I probably will. And they're giving us a sore knight in case we did not get that bubble. I don't know how you could miss it anyway. And here's the main gimmick of this game, treasure chests. Now there are three in each, well not three in each level, but a maximum up to three. We'll be sure to get as many as we can, but some are hidden within Waddle Dees, so we'll have to be careful. We will be doing a bonus episode at the very end, where we'll show off getting all of the chests, 100% completing the game, but for the main playthrough we're going to spare them. And already level 2, pretty simple as well, only one chest to find. Good job, Kirby. In this world, we're going to actually 100% prison planes. The next world is where we're actually going to have to skip over a chest. And here they want us to be introduced to the fire ability from Flamer here, to burn down the grass. But there are Waddle Dees within, so we have to be careful yet again. The main theme I find in this game is a lot of the tutorials they like to show off with Waddle Dee's as enemies, and we don't want to do that. Like this fire thing here, if we hit it will come forward and hit that big Waddle Dee, so we have to be very careful of that as well. Many traps here when you're trying to avoid all the Dee's, and we'll jump over him, hit Snooter, knock him into the pit, and if I can get up there we have a fire bubble. And Mr. Frosty. And yeah, he catches me already. Ow. I don't think he's even going to do the Mr. Frosty butt wiggle either in this fight. No, he goes down pretty quickly. Now normally I'd want to grab what he's called as a mid-boss. Normally you'd want to grab those because they usually involve puzzles right after, but Mr. Frosty here is just acting as a tutorial. We don't need his ice ability right away. And more water. Luckily there's no Waddle Dees to walk into it. And Gordo, just cut this down. Gordo, Kirby's worst enemy. And here we're about to see an adorable ability. Animal Kirby, he's so cute. And of course they want to tutor us on the dirt with Waddle Dee, but we're not going to fall for that. Grab the one up, and cut through. Yeah, another puzzle which environs altering the world, a big theme of this game, and we're just going to cut up here through this helix fossil, and avoid big Waddle Dee. So now we're going to come up to a blue treasure chest, and blue chests are 
That's adorable. And blue chests are pretty important. Not only do they contain a good item, but they will summon one of the squeak squad here. The big eared bandits Kirby um, is going to learn about throughout this game. But this one's not a problem. We get away from them easy, and I miss an item. Not the like we needed anyway. And we get music. Not like we'll be going to the sound room here either, so we don't have to really worry about that just for the sake of completion. And looks like we're off to King Dedede's castle, and we have the butter building theme. One of the best themes in Kirby. Jump over Pengi, and the very suggestive doorway, like in Kirby Mass Attack. Kill Sparky there. I really do like the spark ability Kirby has here. We'll be using it a lot later on, but for now we'll just cut through Sir Kibble and Snooter. As we make our way down. And I'm just gonna try and eat Sword Knight. Jump up, watch out for Heavy Knight. And King Dedede, I must say, has a very good taste in artwork. Nope. And now we have Invincibility Lollipop and usual Kirby games, we would just grab it and run right through, but they want us to kill Waddle Dee, so no charging boldly ahead for Kirby in this playthrough. Even a big Waddle Dee, but we can hit Snooter and Hothead, and grab the other chest. Pass Gordo. And we have another big blue chest. But we're not going to summon the entire Squeak Squad, we'll just summon our Fire Billy that we grabbed before Mr. Frosty. And we have Storo, the big fat one. And Storo doesn't really like fire, as you can tell here. We're just going to back him up into a corner. He's probably the easiest of the Squeaks to fight. And he's dropping food, how fitting. His belly button looks like a big old target. And as soon as he wakes up, we can beat him some more and be on our way. And he's gonna go right about now. Alright, grab the hamburger. And we can't actually get this bubble because my inventory is full. Kirby only has five inventory slots for an ability bubble, an item bubble, or a chest. I already had three full of those chests. And that's gonna be a problem in World 2, as you'll find out once we get to that level. Yes, all the levels were pre-recorded. Um, so I do kind of remember where I messed up. It was a little while ago I did it, though. And here we have an extra level for... We'll unlock by getting enough chests, which we will get all the extra levels, and back into the castle. Kill Weepin' Bell here. At least I call him Weepin' Bell. I think his name is Crip. Past Folly. Folly gives the bomb ability, but we don't really need that right now. And then we have Twister. Speaking of abilities, his is very good for boss battles, which we will no doubt be seeing later on. Let's just grab Heavy Knight here. Let's grab our sword back. Go away, Scarfy. Don't want to absorb him. Go away, Naughty. Go away, Myga. And Starman. Good for getting through these pieces right here. And here's a bit of a tricky level. If you don't know where to go, you may have to redo the level. Because if I took the right path, I would be out of the chest. So that could be one annoying thing about this game. You kind of have to know um, in hindsight. Or redo the level. Which a lot of people don't really want to redo a whole level. After you've already done it once. And we have a new species of Waddle Dee, the Parasol Dee. And he is also included in this playthrough. We will not be taking any Parasol Dees at all. I think the only time I use Parasol in this game will be given to us through an ability bubble. Nope, we're not gonna fall for that Waddle Dee. And we have the next blue chest here. Which squeak will we summon after this? I think I know who it's gonna be, and... Doc. Okay, Doc is probably one of the most annoying squeaks. He likes to hover around in Kirby's airspace. Here he's not too bad, but there are some levels. I know one World 2 that gets pretty darn irritating with him flying around. But here, not so much. 
we'll do it for the extra world, on to world 5, or level 5 rather. And level 1-5 is probably the easiest in the entire game. We just break these barrels, get items, and there's a Waddle Dee in that middle one. We want to be careful there. And fly up here to find another chest. And with that, we are done. Easy peasy. And I even get the item. background. Yeah, we're not going to be using those, nor can you see those, so not really important, just for the sake of completion. Now, I wonder who will be fighting here. Hmm. Alright, King Deity. Now, interestingly enough, I think Kirby Speak Squad is the only Kirby game, unless there's a side game I didn't play, where Wispy Woods does not appear at all, and King's gonna eat me. Yeah, it's a little weird, because usually Wispy would be the boss of World 1 in any given Kirby game, but not here, and the king is down. Not too bad of a fight. I think if that one goes on longer, he would summon Waddle Dees, which could be really bad, because the boss of World 3 is going to do just that. And a trophy for beating World 1. Good job, Kirby. Now, if you like story, um, just get used to it right now. Or rather, don't, because World 6 is the next time we'll be getting any story for the game. Yeah, Kirby doesn't really need story too much. And we have the Squeaks. The big-eared strangers we met back in the second level. I like how the corner picture of Kirby right there is pretty cute. And the king is about to show us his excellent bowling skills. And Kirby's cake is still lost. The adventure will continue for that piece of cake. And with that, we are hurled right into World 2-1. Not even a chance to go to the overworld as Kirby falls. Yeah, so that will do it for this episode, and I will see you for the next one.